All right. Piers Morgan apologizes to Jay-Z and Beyonce. So I'm sure you already know, Jaguar Wright, a little while ago, went on to Piers Morgan's uh, show. Or oh, what up, uh, Uncle? She went on to Piers Morgan's uncensored show. And uh, she said some things, uh, the stuff she's been saying for years now, Jay-Z being worse than Diddy and all that other stuff. And uh, <laughs> instead of, people been saying for the longest, if it's not true, why haven't anybody sued her? And I I was talking to Travis about this uh, a couple of days ago. I said, well, does it really sue anybody? No offense to her. Does it really benefit anybody to sue her if she... No, she doesn't really have anything. She doesn't have a platform. She doesn't have all this other stuff. She goes on other people's platform. Suing her would only bring light to her allegation. Regardless of if we think it's true or not, it wouldn't stop her from, you can't, you're not getting nothing from her. So it made more sense to do what they're doing with this was they're about to try and now push the black ball on her. So instead of suing her, anybody that helps her spread her, spread what she's saying, they're going to go after them. I, when I saw this right here and saw Piers Morgan give that uh, give that apology, I immediately said, all those YouTube channels that are getting those hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of views off of her, at some point, they're going to start getting flagged. Very soon, they're about to go after them, too. Let me just play this. ...for me, because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. Jay-Z has been notable by his silence since uh, these charges were brought against Diddy. Why do you think that is? Because that's what he does. He starts little fires everywhere, forces everyone involved to go and carry water while he sneaks away without a response. That changes now, Sean. You must respond. You have no choice. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common, professionally and privately. Sean Carter. She's been on his ass for a while. Uncle says, Pierce involved, he's Illuminati. Well, he's definitely in the industry, uh, the media industry, propagandist. I also find it strange when these foreigners, particularly from places like uh, these quote-unquote Middle Eastern or Indian, European, whenever they want to branch out, they come to America. and they're like, Why are people from the UK and all these other foreign countries allowed to come to America and become mouthpieces in politics towards Americans? I always found that strength, find that strength. Why would I go to a foreign person? <laughs> I guess you could say they're supposed to have a nonpartisan or a, a, a non-biased opinion on certain things because they're not involved. They're not citizens, or at least they're not, you know, they're not, they shouldn't be as a, uh, as attached or to any of the politics, but I always found it strange. But back to his point about him being a, whatever he is, a Illuminati was or whatnot. If that's the case, why did he even have the interview with her? Because he gave her the pl- he gave her the platform to go on, go on the show, so why would he agree to it? He knew, he knew that they were going. If, the, if this interview did the numbers he wanted to do, he knew that there there was going to be a response from some some lawyers or from Jay Z and Jay Z and Beyonce's camp to have this taken down. So maybe this was just meant to put a light on her to let to put the target on her back. I don't know. Virginia says the Hollywood unveiling uh, from P did he to the pussycat dolls, to Jaguar Wright, to all of them just sound like some pimps and hoes shit, a.k.a. entertainment. Exactly. I've been somewhat critical of Jaguar Wright in my um, in my opinion because she said things that were pretty much public rumor that we already heard or whatever. But she never, and she said she was in those, some of those environments, but she never goes into real detail on her envir- involvement, but rather some very unconsequential things she might admit. But if you was as deep in this as you say, and you know so much, and why is everything you're saying is things we've already heard? I mean, no offense, but it is what it is. Only difference from typical Hollywood inc- uh, incorporates to a cult it, to a cult and to it. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, y'all. 
This has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching through our culture and our society for decades. Me? It must stop. I don't trust peers. There's been obviously a lot Cruelty of free artistry. Right. There's been a lot of uh rumor mill about what has happened in the rap world. A lot of allegations that the misogyny in the lyrics clearly was based on mm. a general misogyny towards women away from the music. And that clearly seems to have been born out. I'm going to where Travis. Oh, Travis is on a sabbatical, uh, on Cole. He took a break uh from doing this. He uh <laughs> he got some stuff going on with with work and stuff. So he took a little break. But yeah. Uh, by these charges against Diddy, which if he's found guilty of all this, he's never coming out of prison. How dangerous do you think... Thank God. He, how dangerous do you think he is as a person? I think he's one of the most dangerous people I've ever met. A lot of people have been questioning, well, she doesn't really know him. She has no knowledge of him. She doesn't have a picture with him. I'm smarter than Claudia Jordan. I would never take a picture with the devil. Everyone knew he was the devil. He's been the devil for 30 years. He's been covered and protected by not only Clive Davis, but Lucian Grange. And that's a name that they're very uh, skeptical to bring. I remember when the, when, the, um, when the allegations first started and that complaint was filed, his name was in it, and then it was removed, and now it's back in it. So, I saw, uh, I saw, I am watching uh, Joe Budden. He made a point. He said, maybe the reason why Lucian Grange chose his son, Elliot Grange, to take over another label is because he knows that it's about to be a shakeup where he is. I don't know if that has anything to do with the Diddy situation, but if it does, it would make sense that I would put somebody I trust in position of power if I'm possibly about to take a fall. So, we'll see. He was selected to be the demon that he is to keep the culture in line so the industry could continue to rape it for all of its precious jewels. We have too many lost. The list of lost is ridiculous. And everyone knows Diddy was selected for this job. Why there's no... Uh, Virginia says the biggest reveal from the Jaguar Wright interview was her admitting she was a sex worker. Then a lot of her alleged insider talking points made more sense to me. When I found out, she said she was messing around with, what's his name, Scott Storch, the the, the white um, uh, producer. It's like, well, yeah, most of these, for a long time in music, especially in hip-hop, whenever a female rapper came in and was flourishing, it was assumed that she was more than likely sleeping with either a rapper or a producer. But it's also been a thing with singers. Uh, when you start talking about people like Mariah Carey and all these other people, a lot of them were dating executives at some point, which is a big plus, obviously. Yeah, you know, we look at uh, Ashanti. You no, know, I know people don't like that uh Irv Gotti put it out the way he did, but it's he was messing around with her. He was giving her access to certain music and beats and uh features. It is what it is. So when she admitted that she was doing that, and I know that's something that goes on in the industry in general, like we all do, it's kinda obvious that most of these people are selling ass for a chance. That's why you hear people say if anybody in the industry is successful, pretty much almost any level, they've done something compromising. It may not always be in a sexual nature, but some something morally they had to give up in order to make it to any level of success in the industry. Uncle says we wish him well. Tell him we miss. All right, I make sure I tell him, man. Uncle says she admitted to being a part of the industry party. Exactly. But she didn't give me any details about what she was doing. Like, even when you, no offense, you talk about people like uh, Cat Williams and all these other people that will tell these stories about going to a party and going to a back room and seeing something, or whether somebody doing a whole bunch of drugs or some something sexual with somebody of the same gender. I always ask, what were you doing? You were going to a back room. Were you going there alone? Were you going there with somebody? What were you looking for? You were at the party going to a back room. What were you doing? <laughs> if you was there, then you was a part of it. You got a chance to be around it because you were entrusted to be there because you were willing to do something or you did something. Regina says she also admitted in the interview that she was a dominatrix. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, they ain't that kinky freaky stuff, I guess. All right, uh, let me go to the next point. This is the apology that he put out. You were right, unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during that interview. 
As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves, but now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact, and we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored. Uh, but, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theatre, there are legal limits on us too. And we apologise to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, now, sure... Short... Mm-hmm. Well, Jay... Get it right, Piers. All right, let me show... This one I want to show something. Hold on. I'm good on this one too. Hold on, y'all. Let me just skip through. And this right here where... And this right here, if you're somebody who's following Jaguar right and what she's saying, this part right here makes me you, you should probably get ready to jump off to jump off the uh the bandwagon. Cause now it's going to another level of shout out to Orlando Brown, I guess. Uh <laughs> he said some things, some very uh high profile allegations he put towards accusations he's put towards certain people. This is when I, I would hop off the bandwagon and just kind of move move on with it and understand that the, some of the stuff she's saying may be true. It's mixed in with a lot of, you know. Let me play this. Is there some? Is there something called programming that we are programmed to? You know, That's she all. wrote the Matrix. Oh, okay. She spoke to the woman that did. No, do you? I'm saying, do you? I definitely get that. Brother, God bless you. Brother, do you know that she wrote the Matrix? That she wrote the movie. Mm -hmm. Hey, bruh. Bruh. Come on, man. I'm on you. I'm on you. He honors me. <laughs> he honors me. Get the fuck out of here. Shanti says, Jack said, they're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. You know, it's funny because you remember, y'all remember the, um, the things that were being said about T.I. and uh, Tiny? How it was a story a little bit. And then it kind of faded away, and then later on, they quote unquote beat the case and it kind of went on, nothing happened. Uh, eh, it seemed kind of normal in the industry. Bro, am I lying? No, I'm on you. I'm on you. Bro, hey, you honor me. Listen to How me. You honor me with these lies. Am I lying? You honor me. I know. I'm just like, yo, bro, like, that's you all your bread. Me. That's all your money. You honor me. And I'm going to tell you why. They try to take your movie? That's cute. You doing music and you wrote the fucking Matrix. It's, it's, a, it's adorable that you're doing music with people, but you wrote the See, fucking I, movie. I understand. You're <laughs> so much better than you could possibly. All right, man. Enough. At this point, come on. Oh,